No, Who's I'm McGee hopefully. tipping? Because I ain't going He's the opposite. He's sitting of him. on the fence all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he must have bought the fence a year. Yeah. Didn't he? <laughs> Hi there, you're very welcome along to the GAR with me, Darren O'Sullivan. Loads to talk about again today, and I'll be joined a little later on by Longford's Mickey Quinn to talk about the upcoming Talton Cup. Um, but I'm delighted to be joined in studio today by Kevin's Mystic Mackey and Galway's. I won't say Finian. I was going to call him having to clue Henley, but that's a bit harsh. It's all, right, it's all about the predictions here, and we're going to talk about it a bit later on. But uh, I think we both were a bit harsh on Keen last time, and he predicted uh, Derry would win Ulster. Um, he's proven to be right, but we'll get to that a bit later on. But the Talton Cup started the weekend. Uh, good win for Offaly and Wicklow. So, um, yeah, I think the, the Wicklow, the Wicklow Water game probably expected. Wickley ought to get come out on top of that, but it's good to have the competition up and running. And obviously, Offaly came out on top against Wexford in a in a tight game for Lynn. Yeah, I you know. Look, it's it started after all the furore and all the talk about it. It's it's up and running. Um, obviously, you know, a bit of a whimper of a start having two games on on the weekend. Probably a lot of the lesser teams playing this weekend uh, in the pre- preliminaries. So, um, look for Wexford is very hard to you know create the same act twice, uh, particularly when it's you know it's their neighbours or they're they're not far away. They're in Leinster, Wexford, and, and Offaly. For Wexford to go and beat Offaly again, obviously Offaly were pulling the mm. chairs off the dressing room to get out and have another crack. So it was perfect perfect storm for John Mahon and the boys and look. Niall McNamee, uh, you know, uh, in his in all his years, one five again carried carried them over the line, you know, like they've they've they, they've some good players awfully. They've they've shown it in the last while with getting up to Division Two, you know, Anton Sullivan and these guys, like they this is one that game yesterday could give them a bit of momentum to get forward and Mahan will kind of, you know, like getting off to a, a a good start, getting a win and and getting a bit of momentum behind them. But you know they'll need, to, you know, down the road they'll need to add to Niall McNamee and start and 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 get a bit of support up front. But look, a good win for Offaly. Wicklow was expected definitely. You know, Waterford are are are, are struggling. They need more games. Yeah. That's another day's conversation. Yeah. But they, you know, they need to be going up out again next weekend, playing another team to try and improve on the things. But now their year is over you know they're not back until January next year that's a whole other can of worms but look it's up and running there's some good ties coming this weekend so uh, interesting so far Yeah John Martin came out there you know, it was a week or two ago I seen he had an interview and he was almost throwing away the GPS and all the stats and all this stuff and I was like oh that's my type of manager no <laughs> you know get rid of it Keen. but uh, no it should be a good game now obviously we have Wicklow and Offaly now this weekend so it should be good but it's disappointing I don't know a bit of bit of extra thinking going into it we could have actually had one of them games on TV I know it was on GA Go for a tenner but not many people are going to spend a tenner on it to be honest but you would have actually had a good few watching I think if it was an RT and the hurling wasn't until four o'clock so are the GA missing a bit of a trick there by just, just a bit of forward thinking really with Akeen yeah look at the the big thing for them is they need to promote this touching mm. cup like as you, you look at Offaly and Maxwell one point game two point game like, yeah Three eleven to to two thirteen or something like that. Like that, that's an exciting game for yeah. everyone. Do you know what I mean? Like quality mightn't be your Dublin carry, but like excitement is is what people want to see. Like you know, and and that's what I believe the Talton Cup really brings is excitement, tight games. Do you know, like the like there's loads of class footballers that that play for the so called weaker counties and they don't get the the airtime. So it, it, it's up to the GA, up to RTE, TG four. You know these these yeah. companies really need to to push this forward and. If it was pushed forward, it would start to be a real recognised competition. But unless they're doing that, like the likes of lads leaving squads, like we say the down squad lads leaving squads to go to America, you can, it's hard to argue with young lads yeah. doing that. You know, like you're not getting airtime. Like you're just playing, you might as well be playing challenge matches when they're not aired live on TV. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you have to get to a semi final of a Talchin Cup to get on to, get on to television. So it's just, it's, it's a long old year of slogging for for no real rewards you know yeah and Kevin your own county now I suppose look they've been tipped as red hot favourites they're playing down we had a bit of a chat and we're saying it's hard to know it down like we all know they've good footballers but there's obviously a lot going wrong up there at the moment but would there be a bit of excitement in Kevin just the fact that you're in a competition now that realistically well you're red hot favourites for by other counties and other pundits like us talking about it would there be a bit of excitement because there is that opportunity to get back to Crow Park Climb the steps of the Hogan stand again for these group of players. Yeah, look at when you when you're there and, and you're part of the group. Silverware is key. 
like Cavan are definitely good enough to be within the the, the Sam, mm. like half of of the country. But at this moment in time, I wouldn't say there's excitement. You know, it's kind of like we should. The question is, we should be up mm. here and we're mm. here. But as the competition goes on and and all going well, Cavan progress, and if they get to a semi final, then next of all you start to say, yeah. Like we, we can go and win this, mm. and then everything starts to ramp up. Do you know the the early starts of any competition sometimes takes a, a bit of time for the wheels to get yeah. in motion. Same as like an Ulster Championship, a Monster Championship, it takes time. But like as it gets to me, we say the quarterfinals, semi-finals. That's when you see the Talchin Cup, and everyone will start to to build on it then. And, and just at home in that, like people are kind of like still going off. We're tight to Donegal, but we're in the Talchin Cup. Yeah. You know, and that's just kind of that's that's the reality of it, unfortunately. Well, that's the position they put themselves <clears> in, really. Do you know, a couple of bad league performances, or maybe taking their eye off the ball, and you could slip through the divisions. And unfortunately, having a good championship game every now and again isn't good enough. It's about being consistent all the way through. And I suppose Finian, we're going to have London and Sligo as well. It's like a kind of championship clash as well. And I, it'd be a game I'd be looking forward to watching as well because. John you know, are tight enough over the league as well. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose going back to the point on, on, on winning margins and Keane made the point about yesterday, you know, a po- kick of the ball between Offaly and Wexford. Um, you know, it was it, it, it was a tight game. I think there's only been four, five games out of 20 odd games that we've had to date that have had, you know, less winning margin than five points. I think the rest have all been six plus, you know. So any of these tight games we get that are, you know, come down yeah. come down to the stretch, th- th- that's what we want, you know. That's 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 the excitement. I think everyone was watching the soccer yesterday and it was up and down and whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, like, people need to take interest. I don't think a lot of people will care that Waterford are gone or or that Wexford are gone today. Do you know what I mean? And that's their season over. Bar the players who, who train and know what it takes to... For for those players, they they put in the same effort as everyone else, and now now they're gone as well. But that's an that's another point. But I think you know as many as many games that we can get that are tight. I think Sligo and London to the point is 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 is, is juicy enough tie. I think London will have 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 put it in and would have been you know looking forward to the Talton Cup you know over over the last couple of months. Um, Sligo obviously. You know their second year in, in in this kind of project, they would have been looking at the Connacht Championship a bit more. So it's an interesting game um, to see how Sligo kind of bounce back from from the trimming they got off Ross Common. Um, uh, I, and look, obviously, you know London lost to Leitrim, but it was a narrow game as well. So, so London are off a kind of a more positive experience yeah. than Sligo are. So it's 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 yeah, certainly an interesting game. That should be should be a tight one as well, which is yeah. what I want to see. And I'm looking forward to actually talking to Mickey Quinn a bit later about it because obviously. I always find it a bit strange me talking about it because I'm there going, look, I was playing with Kerry, we were always competing for Sam and sometimes it might come across as what does he actually know about it. But it'd be interesting to talk to Mickey about it because obviously Longford, um, they have a tough game against Fermanagh, but he has a couple of league titles, won 2011 and 12. But this is another opportunity maybe for Silver, maybe not this year, next year, John, because you are playing teams of your own level so it'd be interesting to see a fellow who's actually preparing for this competition how he how he's preparing for it how the squad are preparing for it so it'd be interesting to get an intake into that and look I think the semi-final is going to be on RT and the rest of them you can stream on GA Go and look we've talked about it before about the image rights and the TV rights and stuff like that they need to get this put into it like and look we won't harp on about it again all the time but if we can get the format right, I think there's just a format at the moment that's wrong. Yeah. But on a Waterford mm. point of view, look, they're gone from the hurling, they're gone from the football. There's no reason they can't be starting all their championships, club championships in mm. the next two weeks. And these players might get a good winter. Do you know? They might get a winter where they're not slogging around the muck in the gutter. Yeah. Like, yeah. What's, what's wrong with players actually getting a couple of months off to... Yeah, the, the, the problem the is there though, you know, you, you start the championship early and then an inter-county manager comes in and goes, oh, we've two months extra now here and then wheel lads Big back time. in too yeah. early. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's the killer for them yeah. boys. Yeah, now. your first meeting's in September. Yeah, and you're going, oh, you know, and, and it's great, like, they'll play club football and club hurling in, in grey weather, but as for yeah. a winter off from any of my... Uh, no memories, thing, there's, yeah. there's no they, like it's a new manager comes in and goes oh we've two months extra here to get fitter and faster and all this and yeah. it, it, it doesn't happen it, unfortunately it, it, it'd be an interesting experiment though to talk to what like a lot of like 
a lot of people won't care about Waterford today, Waterford football particularly, you know. Um, but it'd be an interesting experience to see how many training sessions they did, how many gym sessions they did. They played nine games. Um, you know, what's the plan for the future? What's going on in a, in a county like Waterford? Do you know what I mean? And get some insight into it and, and, and kind of bring it to the bring it to the public's attention of this is actually what's happening or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because there's going to be loads of debates. Is the Talton Cup the answer to this? I don't know. The provincials are certainly not the answer. No. There have been a disaster this year. Um, disaster, but, yeah. but, you know, for the likes of Cavan, and I know you were on about Cavan and being close to Donegal, but like, you know, Derry went to Division 4, they have to come back. Cavan were, should want to win the Talton Cup this year, get up to Division 2 then next year. You know, I know it's another year, but when they get there, then they have to re realise that steps. it can never happen again. Cavan can never get to Division 4 again because they're down playing Talton Cup and they'll, they'll have had a taste of it. They probably or they have a good chance of winning it. So, you know, it's it's a kick in the ass for, for, for Gavin now, but hopefully it's good learning for them where they're back to where they think they belong or they should be, as, as the, Keane says. The, the realistic way of looking at it, there probably is three tiers where we are. Like, mm. You know, like mm. there, there is three tiers. That you've, you, see, you can argue for like the likes of Cavan and Down, we say maybe Longford. They'd feel they're, they're thereabouts with the lower teams competing for Sam. And then you have teams that will really bite on to this going Talchon Cup is, is what we have do you know like are you that, including down there now just because Kevin are playing on the weekend <laughs> you're trying to take the pressure off no. <laughs> the pressure pressure's higher now because down seem to be down playing the whole lot so yeah. Kevin are expected to win so it's actually going to be a lot more difficult than than, than previous years because mm. usually Kevin play down you'd be there going down should win this game like and now at the minute Kevin are favourites so that kind of puts more pressure on Kevin but like the, there is potentially three tiers there but we're getting to two tiers and there's teams that don't really care about it. You know, straight away, off the bat, there's teams that aren't caring about it. There's lads leaving a down panel. Like, there's lads probably leaving other panels that you don't hear about. Mm. Do you know that kind mm. of way? So, it's it's hard to... It's not a, it's not going to be a quick fix. There's definitely no. not a quick fix to where we are at the minute. But I, I definitely... I, I'm a believer of the Italian Cup, but only if it gets the right press, the right push forward. And at the minute... Like it was str over Twitter. I don't know who put it up. Like how bad it was organised. Like it was within two weeks, it was like this was a new format, and you're kind of yeah. like, what's going on here? You know, like it, it yeah. just yeah. Like, there's <laughs> probably lads getting paid a lot of money to to really throw their arse at it. You know, yeah. that that's kind of what's been done, and it's not showing respect to any players that are involved in the Talchon Yeah, Cup. but and, and that's that's very frustrating. Like if I was playing in it, and it was kind of like, what's what's the format? Like you, you lose Donegal and then you're thinking what's the format where are we going forward and then next of all it's kind of like well we don't really know because they haven't told us you'd be like what the like what's going on here yeah. you know yeah. so it, it's just showing no respect like Sam is Sam you know exactly what's going forward Talchon Cup they're just really just kind of going oh we'll wing it yeah you know? so it's it's not it's a box taking exercise yeah. at the minute at right. the moment it's a case of we'll see if this works if it doesn't we'll change it next year and we'll change it look and obviously we know it's going to take time to kick off and people really buy into the the only way you can buy into it really is by having a looking professional, yeah. by giving it the credit it deserves. Look, we're, we're blue in the face from talking about yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I do think if we get a couple of good games this weekend, like good games now where it is tense and there's a, there's a bit of fireworks and there's a bit of tension and I can maybe understand what, maybe understand why they wanted to do the kind of half provincial kind of split and the... But it's it's still be no good like Cavan Down would be an ideal game to put on TV mm. and then that goes and builds the Talchon Cup. It's not on telly. We could talk about it and see a bit in the Sunday game and be like, oh yeah, just that was a great game. Yeah. The rest of the country having a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it really, they're not doing anything to, to promote it. Like, like Longford and Fermanagh, another great game. That yeah. I think it was mm. a point in the game the last two years to play it in the league. Like the two good game, good tight games. Play, have one this weekend and then another next weekend. Like that would that would boost the whole profile of it. Is there any games on the? Uh, no, there's nothing to the semi final. So like they're they're really you know a real tasty affair that'll go down to the wire all going well. Do you know that that sort of stuff would then start to get people going. This could be the right way to go. Yeah. But unless they're putting it on TV or or like they, they have to make a we have to, a, to see honest it. effort. Like yeah, you can't get people talking about something if they don't see it. That's, that's exactly the be all end all yeah. of it. But, but it all comes down. Look, the elephant in the room is the provincial councils and the county boards that are 
voting for the status quo and yeah. things like that. Look, it's 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 clannish. It's it's we're all sound here. Forget Waterford. I don't really give a crap about Waterford. You've an awful set in Waterford. I know you're. Yeah. Just, <laughs> no, but, but no, I, was, I I I have a positive set. Like I'd love to I'd love to yeah. I'd love to spend a couple of days down there and see what their actually ambition is yeah. in the county and how the who's going to help them and who's helping them or what's the story because it's just cut them off. Sure, they're grand. They're gone. They're yeah. sound. Exactly. Most like, of the problem you know, is that but Donegal and Galway are all have, you know you know we're fine because we can yeah. do we know what we're at and we'll vote for this that and the other like yeah. it's anyhow look it, we, we'll be we'll, we'll give you a separate show about yeah. water we'll get them an Airbnb in yeah. Waterford <laughs> next weekend <laughs> Don Garvin for the summer I think we'll do the Greenway yeah. but um, look you mentioned there the provincials they've more or less been a disaster um, but they're on this week um, we were all fortunate enough we played in some provincial finals what was your feelings the week of a provincial final was it nerves was it excitement I'll go to you first Finn. you would have you would have had mixed yeah um, yeah um, I suppose yeah look I, I made my debut in a, in a kind of final against Mayo and it was um, I was actually working I I, I, I was knocking around the panel in 2004 and then I broke my hand came back we won the All-Ireland under 21 didn't get picked to play in New York didn't get in the. I wasn't in the panel against New York wasn't in the panel against Leach I was actually working in the bar in the clubhouse and I was out to watch the second half or whatever back in or whatever and we were playing Leach but the following day I got a phone call you're in the panel and then I was starting three weeks later in the first um, uh, I remember yeah it was, it was, it was, it was 30 degrees and 35 that packed house and all that sort of stuff terrible game but uh, we won it anyhow but the week like look the week of a kind of final it was kind of you were used to it because of my first well, I was in the first six years I played uh, we were kind of final every we were getting mm. used to them it, you know the, particularly against Mayo there was good buzz around there was a lot of Mayo people you were kind of trying to stay away from the club because there'd be a lot of Mayo <laughs> people in the club and things like that but uh it was a big game look it was the be all and end all because there wasn't many All-Irelands in either Mayo or Galway you know it was kind of you know it was a huge game to, mm. to get to a kind of final and, and, and Roscommon as well and Sligo were good at the time so it was different when you're playing Mayo you were a bit more kind of carefree because you know there was opposition there was a lot more pressure when you were playing a Sligo because the expectation the expectation was high and things like that so you just try and kind of put yourself <coughs> stay away from the house stay away from the old fella uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean not be going to the club too much because you're listening and everyone's got an yeah. opinion and you do this that and the other but uh, look fierce excitement particularly when you're riding the Castle Bar or Pier Stadium fear, like really really you could feel the buzz you'd get down the, you know the grass being cut getting ready and like they, they were great games now look I know we give out about the provincial Championships, but when you get to the final stage, that's when the games are good, and that's when the real excitement. And I suppose the one thing I'd miss from the only thing I miss from not playing is 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 Connacht final week when you be getting ready and 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 uh, you know the, they were the big games. Kian, yeah, look at the the, the buzz. We'll say in the week we weren't we weren't lucky enough to to, to get to too many. Like there was there's a the big drought for us, but like the Does that make it extra special though. Then when you are, does it does see, it bring about extra? The, that's the thing for, for like sure. the, the we say the weaker counties, you know. Yeah. This like one in every ten years, we'd say a Leeds from a Cavan or whatever get to a, a Connacht or an Ulster final. The build up for that, that's why the provincial final uh, yeah. is so good because the potential of one big win and you're there, you know, and the build up to it is outrageous. That's why it's so hard to pro- potentially get rid of the provincials, mm-hmm. you know. Like going into the start of the year, Leeds from or whatever are saying we're not going to win Sam realistically. We beat. New York, we beat Sligo and next to what we pip Galway or pip Roscommon. We're there. Do you know? Like London yeah. were in London were in a, a provincial final not so long ago. Yeah. Do you know? So that that's what makes it all the more difficult to, to, to discard these provincials, you know, because the potential for the real big day is there for the weaker county in, in that. Like so like the build up for in eighteen, yes, everyone was hyped and yeah, it was what ifs, what ifs. We're playing Donegal were at the time, I think there were in eight Ulster finals in nine years. So, like, mm-hmm. we were rank outsiders at the time. But, like, from getting there in 18 has brought Cavan on tenfold in yeah. championship football, not league football, but championship football. Like, we've been in another one in 90, or oh, what was it, 20, won it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, like, I think that the, the drive, it's a closer carrot to get to a provincial final than Sam. You know, yeah, you, you look at Sam and you always think to yourself, oh, no chance. You know, like in your head, you're kind of this positive thought we yeah. spoke about a couple of weeks ago. But the doubters is still there. When you're looking at the provincial, you're playing a near neighbour and you're kind of like, I, we can beat them. Like, do you know that kind of yeah. way? Whereas Cavan go out to play Kerry 
unless you're playing them every year in provincial championships, you're kind of thinking, oh, we're not going to beat them. Yeah. But if Kerry was an Ulster, you'd go and actually go in and go and like, we can we can take these. Yeah. Do you know what I kind of way? So it's just, it, it's a little thing like that, 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 bolsters the, the the provincial like but <clears throat> the, the build up to the to the week is, is brilliant same as same as anyone else like there's you, you have the shite talkers too that yeah. kind of will will be harp on your ear and you stay, try and stay clear of them without kind of insulting them you know so you kind of when you're playing you kind of keep to yourself you know yeah. everyone's saying oh it's a great build up of a week it's, it's not really you know you're kind of like oh can't really you're avoiding everyone. Can't, you can't go into the shop like, yeah. is it next? Oh, what about Sunday? You know, and you're kind of like, oh, would you go away? Like, you yeah. know, I don't want to be talking about because you're quoted saying something. <coughs> oh, we should win, and then next of all, it's like, oh, Mackie says, you know, yeah, and, and then next of all, it's it, it snowballs and it's gone wild. So yeah. you're kind of from my thing is like you kind of. You, you turn into a recluse, you know, you're yeah. like, oh, someone going to town for me. I'm not going to town. I'm not talking to anyone, you know, because that, that's kind of the way it is because it, it's so easy to stuff to snowball, you know. But it's, like, it's funny, like, um, when you talk about some of these big days are so rare, you actually don't enjoy them. Yeah. Like they kind of bypass you without, because yeah. you're so focused on it. Like, and like we were fortunate enough down in Kerry that we were in them more or less every year or whatever, and it but when I started the battles against Cork, like genuine, only for all Ireland final days, mm. you will not beat Munster final day in Clarny with Kerry and Cork. Back when Cork were competing, like absolutely electric. Like we'd get a bus and you'd have to go through town and just bodies everywhere. And it was so handy for them to get the train down, a lot of them. Trains in the middle of town. They'd walk into town, have their beers, walk up to the match, walk down more beers train back to Cork more beers but it was just oh, mm. the atmosphere in Fisher State and whatever it was about Munster final that day it was always most of the time it was nice and then there was just extra heat coming off the crowd because it used to be packed and you'd actually know the Cork crowd had their own sections as well so you knew exactly so they'd actually always be behind the tunnel in Fisher State so when you're coming out I and mean, you're going in at half time and stuff but uh, the last couple of years obviously when Cork fell back and Munster probably wasn't as competitive mm. as it was it took it away from it but it is funny when you stop playing and you think back to the Jesus you do you avoided life yeah. for the yeah, week yeah. of it just except in case except when you're you, working in the bank oh the bank <laughs> the bank was a and nightmare and everyone is waiting there's one guy waiting in the queue for you yeah he, you, can like, no. you can see him you can see him on my they be oh, cashiers who can't no no I'll wait for your man <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah and the Monday was worst if you lost because we were waiting for you to <laughs> did you see that Finian the Monday he never made a Monday after a Connick <laughs> final or the Tuesday yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the Tuesday like go Wednesday yeah. Yeah. Wednesday at best yeah. But, but it's kind of lost now, I suppose. Yeah. Look, with, with you know, there's in, in the last 14 years, eight teams realistically have had a chance of winning provincial titles. You know, yeah. the three in Connacht, the three in Ulster, and Dublin and Kerry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, Leinster final won't be full. Munster final won't be won't be full. Connacht final, there'll be a good crowd, I'd say, and and, and, and there'll be a big crowd up in, yeah. up in Ulster but as well. But the Munster final, it's down in Clarny. And look, I'm not going to go into price. It's 45 euros for the match. 45 euros, yeah. That's mental. Crazy. You get to a Premier League match from that. Yeah. yeah. And I God, like you're trying to encourage crowds to go to games. Look, I don't know what it is for kids or whatever and we'll talk about the months final a bit later on but I was chatting to one of the boys on the way up here and I said, that's 40 euros. He goes, no, no, it's 45. But the biggest problem with that is that the Leinster final might be a different price. Yeah. <laughs> and the Ulster yeah. final will probably be less. Yeah. And the Connor final will be somewhere in the middle. Do you know what I mean? I don't understand how it's all, like it's not across the board. I know it's prov that comes back to provincial councils making their own tea. You yeah, know? and it's, it's another thing of we're trying to encourage people to go at the provincial championships bar Ulster and Connacht, no one fairness is competitive, but they're dying a debt and you're trying to get people to go to them even though the games have been one-sided and you're charging whatever they're charging. So they probably know that Limerick haven't been, been in one in a while and next of all they're going to yeah. escape, like going, we, we'll pull on these boys, they're going to yeah. go because they mm. think Limerick might be in one for another 10 years. Now they could be, they're, they're making great strides like, but they're probably going like, oh, Limerick people are going to go, we'll go to this. Yeah. 45 euros, that's chronic money. As you said, <laughs> then they get their few, few beers in the train. <laughs> but it's that's, expensive out That's day, just like. one person like so. Yeah. But we'll go to the Connacht final because uh, I tipped Ross Common at the start. I did. Delighted with that. that. That's an easy, like <laughs> you've seen the easy route to a final so yeah. we could sit here and go, <laughs> there's, all, I, I got to a final. There's always yeah, forward yeah, thinking. Yeah. You, you need to <laughs> map it out. It's cuteness, possible. cuteness. I, I'm no, I'm no da. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I st I'm still sticking to it Ross Common 
And I know you'll be thinking differently. No. I am. Uh, look, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Get rid of him. He's not going to give us no <laughs> truth the today. The carryism is run, rubbing <laughs> off of me, yeah. I think. <laughs> I, I genuinely have a beer's time for Roscommon now. They'll probably make a fool of me now. But I think they're one of the few who can change their style of play in the middle of a game to a running or a kicking style. Um, I think going into it, they're after two wins in a row against Galway and right, they might say the league, the first league game, mm. still two in a row, they're going for three. And I think sometimes that brings a f- few bits of doubts into teams' minds. And if Roscom get a start, can Galway go, can they get it together? Look, you'll know more, you'll probably know more about the mood up there. I'm presuming Galway will stick to that defensive structure, um, which worked well for the majority of the game against Mayo. Yeah, do you know what? It's a it's it's a massive con- it's a massive conic final. Uh, I'm actually going to blow it up. I've given out about the provincials, but this is a huge game for both counties. A massive game because I think if the winner kind of gets ahead in the in the pecking order, I think if Ross Common win, that puts them ahead of Galway. You know, you know, next year you're mm. looking at Mayo, Ross Common, Galway. You know, it puts it, it puts Galway back, and it really puts Ross Common in 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 the frame. It's um so so look it's 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 a massive game. Obviously, there's going to be a backlash from Galway. There's going to be uh, you know there's a lot of siege mentality given they've yeah. beaten us twice this year and things like that. But uh, they've been interesting games over the last while. A lot of Connacht finals, a lot of FBD finals, league matches. Like it's a huge rivalry now um, between both teams. So there shouldn't be anything spared. I hope the weather is good because, uh, as we know, Pier Stadium can be a disaster yeah. if if the wind is blowing and it's a, it's 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 a two 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 separate halves but I do think look from a Ross Common point of view they've improved great you know hugely I think they're looking to consolidate themselves as a division one team and really because they've they've touched they've fallen back touched yeah. fallen back they really want to get up there now um and they've got they've got the players to do it definitely got the players to do it and as you say they, they can change their system I think the big thing for Ross Common this year and I mentioned it before is their wing forwards yeah. like if Kieran Murta and, and Carl Heenan are your wing forwards you're looking at shooting the lights out because those two boys can score from anywhere you know they're probably two really good inside forwards as well so that kind of sets out where Ross Common are going here particularly with the wind in Pier Stadium if you've got six kickers that can kick from around the 45 and you get room then 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 you're in a good, good space to put up a big score because like you don't want too many workers in the, in the first half you want them in the second half so yeah. I don't know will, will Anthony Cunningham look at that maybe changing up out of Kilroy or someone in the second half to, to start running the game as you as you say to, to, to change halfway through but uh they have the they have the weapons. They have Jeremy Merton coming off the bench there. They have, you know, Keen McKeown has found his has found his form. So they look, they're gonna trouble us. From a Galway point of view, haven't heard much, to be honest. It's been yeah. very quiet, you know. You'd send you the odd tech. Anyway. No, I haven't haven't heard haven't heard a thing. I look, I think against Mayo we got we got it right. We we you know, two sweepers, Kieran Malloy and Dylan McHugh sitting back, you know, we beat beat them on the counter the way to beat Mayo. Um, against Leitrim then we, we, we changed it we didn't have a sweeper system now the number 13 I forget his name from Leitrim caused us a bit of bother you know and they were letting in long ball that causes a bit of bother when we didn't have that defensive mm. shape so look we, we obliterated Leitrim with our forward play and things like that but it'll be interesting to see on Sunday how we go I I think we should go with with what we went against Mayo I think we should keep it tight and try and beat them on the counter Um if, if if I was involved, that's what I would be saying. But um, look, PJ will will maybe have a hybrid. He might have won at the back and, and, and maybe push up on all the kickouts as well. So look, it's going to be an interesting game. The midfield battle is going to be huge. It's mm-hmm. going to be huge. You'll have Enda Smith, Paul Conrad, really good players yeah. knocking around there. Comer will be in and out, you would think as well. So look, it's it's got the makings of a thriller. I hope it, don't, it doesn't <laughs> fall flat in its face, but they're expecting a big crowd in Salt Hill. If the weather is good, the, yeah. there'll be carnival atmosphere. So um, I'm not going to give a prediction yet. We're not ready for that. No. We'll yeah. Later. I'll catch yeah. you later. That's common by four. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Anthony Cunningham was saying during the week, uh, Keen, that he doesn't think the two league games will have a bearing on this championship game. Do, is he just playing games there? Or? Uh, to, to an extent, he probably is writing it off a wee bit. Like the, both teams kind of rested players because in, in the league, I think Galway were already promoted. Yeah. So they passed kind of no remarks. And then in the league, finally, you kind of had Mayo down the line, you know, in, in a week or 10 days or something like that. So it was kind of like, what, what are we, what, yeah. what's our aim here, you know? So he, he's probably right that he doesn't want his players reading into it too much and, and stuff like that. But 
like both team both teams have, have outrageously good forwards. Like that that's the, no one can question how good their forwards is and, and probably Roscommon and, and Galway defenders are probably gonna say, What does Mackie know? But like defensively both both teams are are under a wee bit of pressure. They need that yeah. extra man back, you know, that kind of way. So it's it's nearly who if you dominate around the middle in, in most games you you you'd be thinking we'll win this game, but if you dominate around the middle and and Roscommon play defensive or Galway play, play defensive, like both teams are brilliant on the counter. So yeah. the, the question is like, do you want to win the mid, midfield battle or not? You know, unless you get it in early, you're starting to play over and back, over and back, and like both teams are really good at at, at this blanket defence that was that was brought in, we'll say, in Ulster years ago. Well, yeah. like both teams have really brought it to their own and have outrageous pace breaking out. So. Like it is going to be, it has potential to be, if it was let be a shootout, it'd be a, a spectacle mm. like no other. But I can see it being kind of one of those games, cautious, pedestrian, slow, you know, burner. slow burner, you know. And when one team goes maybe three or four up next to all, bang, we have yeah. to go for this. And then it'll open up. So I, th- I think first half, it, it'll be a slow burner. But when you get into the second half, one of the teams is going to have to come out from this mould, defensive mould that they have. And... Next of all, you've a, you've a real good championship. And a couple of couple of good scores early on from distance will you might change Put pressure it. on. Yeah, you have to push out like, and you've got like some Murta Heaney and Conroy Shaney can kick from distance. Do you know what I mean, Johnny Heaney? So like, if if we get a couple of early scores from the forty five with the wind, then the teams have to come out. The, the defense has to open up a yeah. bit, and and that could change the way the way the game goes. You know, so. Um, no, look, it'll be interesting to see. But, but both teams like of real confidence of beating other. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like so, like the way I always looked at it, like Galway always feel they can beat Mayo. Roscommon then struggle against Mayo. Yeah. But Roscommon have zero fear of Galway. Mm. Like, zero fear. Galway have lost the last three kind of title finals. Yes. I want to play on the mind of small bit. <laughs> well, we've only won two kind of finals in fourteen years. Yeah. If, if you it's want to put it that way, yeah. Uh, so it's a huge game it just for us. Add, it's a huge just, game it just for us. adds yeah. extra pressure. I still think, like I know what the talk is above, but it's one of them. You see, so I one day I could be going Galway, the other day Roscommon. I'm going to stick to Roscommon. I just I've liked what they've been doing, the way they've gone about their business. But I sometimes think bringing that baggage into a game, if it doesn't start well, or let's say Galway can't get Shane Walsh into the game or Comer into the game early, or maybe Conroy has a rare day where he's not clipping him over for 40 yards that, jeez, oh, not this again. Yeah. that That's kind of, that's where the baggage kind of kicks in. To, like, I suppose we were saying it there a few times that when Shane Walsh, Comer and Conroy, if three of them are playing well, it's easier for everyone else because your three main boys doing it. But if one or two of them yeah. is a bit slow getting into it, is that doubt going to creep into the rest of the team? We need we need those three boys playing well. Simple yeah. as that. And if they can get on the scoreboard early, 100%. just do something good early. And Sean Kelly as well. Yeah. Like Sean Kelly is an absolute machine, but is Sean Kelly going to be stuck in on Donny Smith? You know, or how are we going to use him? Like he's against Leitrim the last day, powering forward, setting up points, setting up goals. That's his game. Um, and look, he can mark as well, but I suppose if he's stuck in marking a Donny Smith or he has to go back on a Jeremy Murtha, and if we do take him out of there, are we, you know, Robin Peter to pay Paul? I, 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 it, it's a tough one because against the wind, particularly in Pierce Stadium, if we have Sean Kelly going forward with Shane, Johnny Heaney, do you know what I mean? You know, Finney and O'Lee, then, then, then we, we have a lot to... Uh, Ross Common will have a lot of questions to answer if, if we can get Sean Kelly going mm. that way, but we we need him back there as well. So yeah. he's the captain, he's the leader. So that's a predicament we're in, but we do need those four players. Those four players play well. We we have a right chance. And Keen, I suppose Ross Common, if if they get over the line, how f- how far can they go? Like they're not really in the conversation for an All Ireland, but you win Connacht there, and Connacht is competitive. You can't turn your nose up to it, and I know they played Kerry the weekend. Yeah, look at Roscommon. Nearly it affects them more going into Crow Park than than probably other counties. You know, and mm. Roscommon can beat anyone in any provincial stadium around the country. It just seems like Crow Park causes them serious issues, um, and the way they play, you'd think it'd suit them loads of space for their forwards. But it just comes back to defensively, and like you spoke about Kerry over the last two years, defensively is where they get let down and when you're in Crow Park 
if your defence isn't up to it, you will get absolutely handed a beating. That's why Mayo are so good when it comes to Crow Park. Man for man, pound for pound, they can actually pick lads up one on one. That's why Mayo can actually come to their milk in Crow Park. Where other teams then, this blanket, this extra cover, like it, it doesn't work. So unless they can sort out the, the issues, and call with the exact same, unless the issues can be sorted out defensively for both of these teams, they, they will struggle to kick on and, and win Sam. Because like Dublin come to their milk in Crow Park because they have loads of space and they have pace and power and defence. Do you know? So yeah. defensively, like it's 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 a great spot for a forward in Crow Park when you've pace and power. But defensively, I'm sure it's a, it's a long old day. You'd know better than any <laughs> either of us. But like it's a long old day in Crow Park <laughs> with with thirty yards in front of you, and you're kind of like, where are we going here? Yeah, Do you know? Yeah, so unless yeah. you're unless you're good defensively, to to get out of to get out of Crow Park yeah. with a win, you're under severe pressure. Yeah. And and it's some of the biggest teams and best teams in the country have found that. Do you know? Like Tyrone go up there and they just. They're, they're so defensive mindset's yeah. perfect. The better Kerry team that was tipped to comfortably win in yeah, Ireland, yeah, you know. Yeah. So but it's another it's, one it's there, like one. you can go into Crow Park and play defensive, but unless it's a system that you know like the back of your hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. you might as well not. It takes a lot of work. It A lot of work, a lot of understanding. If it's a big game, there's a big crowd, you don't hear anyone anyway. But it's, very, it's very difficult. Like your, your energy levels will be sapped trying to play defensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like Unless you can man on man just beat your man. Like a defensive setup. Barrett would say Donegal back in the day. Defensive setups always found out in Crow Park mm. because the ball has moved around so much. You're running from Billy to Jack, and mm. next of all, sixty minutes into the game, your legs are hanging, no matter how fit you are. Yeah, and then they yeah. kick on. So, like, unless you can go man for man in, in, in Crow Park, now don't get me wrong, you get the extra bodies back, give a hand, but a defensive setup like is found out in Crow Park, and that's the beauty of of the big pitch. And, and most how good most it is, teams like. do. Most teams do. It's counter attacking mm. game we're in now at the minute. Most teams do, it, but some teams do it and and come up with it the week of match. Say, look, we're going defensive. We're putting these yeah. twelve and ten back. But like a Derry who have put like every minute of every hour. Galway under Kevin Walsh put every second into this to get it right. Do you know what I mean? So when you were in the defensive shape, you knew where you were standing. You were full back line were in front. You know the the wing backs were in tight. You know what I mean? You knew where you were. Yeah. Whereas just being back is is tokenism, as Keane yeah. says. It's a waste of time. You know. So right. look, it, it, it needs it needs work. But Ross Common lost to really good defenders when they were on the cusp Neil Collins and Sean Malouli left the panel yeah. two of their best defenders in the last 10 or 15 years left the panel when they were really coming to the fore about 4 or 5 years ago which was a pity so like it, it, they never really replaced them so now they're into kind of smaller players you know David Murray's yeah. tigerish but he's small and then they've got Daly who's small as well so look it's uh, it's 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 interesting but they Keane's right they, they do have the forwards but see what happens at the back one word prediction. Galway, I have to stick with Galway from from the get go. I like I like the way they play. Finian, you can't go home if you don't say Galway. Yeah, Galway, Galway, Galway in a tight game. It's like Galway in a tight game. Just have to get over the line in this one. So I think we won't we won't leave behind us. Hopefully not. I'm going to stick with Ross Common. Um, of course, yeah. <laughs> don't get sour now. Look, I <laughs> I said him at the start. I'm going to stick to him. We're going to go up up to Ulster now. Derry, Donegal. It's like it's it's gonna be brilliant. It's be gonna fair. be it, probably because of the backroom team as well. Like you say, like Gallagher there, he, he knows Donegal inside out. And from the start, I, I like the way Derry, uh, Derry were going about their business. But when I watched Monaghan against Derry, Monaghan tried to beat Derry at Derry's game, you know. And when they actually slowed their attack down. And, and were patient. They got a lot of scores, marks, frees. But when they forced the issue, next of all, the Derry would kick on and score a goal and, and kill them off. Donegal won't do that. Mm. Donegal will play a pedestrian. They don't care. They'll win the game 7 6. They do not care. It's all about winning. So, as much as I like the way Derry play and its pace and its Everton, I just think. Donegal could wear them, wear them down, keep the ball, and and, and really push it on. And it's, it's experience as well. Like, like yeah, like it's, it's a huge their eighth one, yeah. final in twelve years. Derry's first since two thousand eleven. As good as they've been, you're going into a bit of most of these players, the unknown, and right, they have momentum going in. But that pressure, that build up we talked about, 
sometimes it's out of your control avoiding people mm. um, it's going to be interesting because they have played this free spirited style and it's going to be tense it's going to be tight the atmosphere is going to it'll be interesting how they cope with the pressure yeah it will and I suppose Donegal are going to have to somewhat mirror Derry like they're not going to believe themselves I suppose what Kerry did in 14 against Donegal you know, a little mirrored them a little bit, mm. kind of brought bodies behind the ball. So I think Donegal are going to do the same, and they're going to break a pace. So I hope it's not two rocks colliding in yeah. a, as you say, in a mm. in a ten nine uh, situation, which would really because then you'll have teams all over the country trying to start this yeah. crack again or whatever. But uh, like Donegal or Derry, bring everyone behind the ball. Everyone does fifteen inside the forty five. They're tackling, and then they're the pace they move at McKinless, and they've got Heron up front, McGuigan up front. You know. Kind of like Donegal were. I was going to say, you know, very like Donegal. Very like Donegal. Their pump. <coughs> so, so look, it's, it's, Donegal will have to keep bodies back and have their sweepers and stuff, but they'll want to break a pace. And I just think Keane is right. They'll have that bit more experience when it comes down the crunch with McBrearty, Ryan McHugh, Michael Murphy on the freeze. Freeze are going to be big at the mm-hmm. weekend, you know, who, who slots them and, and things like that. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's a bit soon for Derry, you know. Yeah, they're, they're going to be confident going in. I think it was, to be fair, I think it was Colm O'Rourke said that he worried when they came up against maybe a better team that they don't score enough points, that they've been getting goals, <coughs> but against the Donegal or a bigger county who'd probably mind the house a bit better, that the lack of scores at point kicking might cost them. They are very confident. Do you think that could be the stumbling block? Potentially, but like, Cavan... Gavin playing against Donegal really opened up a can of worms for Donegal. We were talking about how good the replacement for Neil McGee was mm. and Paddy Lynch then took him to the cleaners. Paddy yeah. Lynch is a cub, new yeah. on the scene, and he took him to the cleaners. So, like, Donegal have to be real wary of what's going on in their full back line. Do you know what I mean? Like, Gavin, if, if we had a scored what we should have scored, you know, we would have been ahead of, and, and the, the yeah. long high ball would have been irrelevant. Do you know? But... Like they'd be conscious of that. I, I just feel Derry, like Derry have a lot of good man markers, you know, like McCaig would be happy enough picking up McBerty. Mm, Do you yeah. know, like Killian the Gunner picked up McBerty. McBerty was kind of a, a fringe player for but most of that game. He does that a lot. He is a fringe player for a lot of games, but he comes away at 1 2 mm. in 10 minutes. Well, that, that's very true, but I just I just think Derry, man for man, they will be, they'll be happy enough picking up the majority of the Donegal mm. forwards. I, I just don't know like No Sheen Gallon is out. Yeah, he's he's a big loss. Big like, loss him yeah. coming on is, is a breath of fresh air when, yeah. when he does play. I, it's a it's a middle third is the big thing, like do you know, like Hugh McFadden he he's could do it back. He could do a dog in session on, on Connor Glass yeah. and then Connor Glass could be out of the game. I think it, it always seems like you're saying Michael Murphy. I think this is the biggest game for Michael Murphy in a lot of years because I don't think they have anyone that can actually pick him up. Now, Rodgers will try and run him up and down the field, mm. but Murphy is so physically strong. I think they, Derry have players that can pick up most of the Donegal boys. I just don't think they have a man that can actually physically do what Murphy does. Like Murphy can win the ball and spin and kick it from 40 yards. He can go inside. He can go out the field. I think that's a big thing for Gallagher. He needs to find out how he's going to pick up Michael Murphy. Mm. Whether he brings out Rodgers and picks him up. But Rodgers is one of the best players at driving out of field. So do you lose that to stop Murphy? Or, you know, that like Gallagher's a a lot of thinking to do. I think you sacrifice something to stop Michael Murphy. Because you keep him quiet, you stop his influence on the game. But it's, the more you actually think about this game, the harder it is to call. Yeah. Do you know, because you're, you're be going down different routes and if they do this, but if they do that, I keep getting brought back to this, it'll be a 9-all, 10-9, and then it could end up being an absolute cricket score if both teams say, do you know what, I'm going to mm. concentrate on my own game, our own game here and play the way we are. But so much is point me in the direction of Donegal. They have all the experience, they've been here, players have done it. But they should have been beaten by Kevin. Yeah. Do you know they've been? They haven't performed. You're you're always thinking that there's more in them. There's more in them. There's, maybe there isn't. Do you know yeah. that kind of way? Yeah, we yeah. keep saying there's more in them. There's only so many times you can say without going. Maybe there isn't more in them. Do you know? And maybe the fact that Derry haven't been here will actually be a blessing. There's no pressure on them. Go out, play the game. They're on momentum. They have confidence. They're buzzing under the energy. Um. 
I'm going to confuse myself now, but I just think it's so hard to call. See, Gallagher, Gallagher will have them buzzing. Yeah. That's without a doubt. And he would say it didn't get the, the credit he probably deserved when he was with Donegal. Do you know what I mean? Like it was all Jim McGuinness. It wasn't anything that Gallagher does. Now, Gallagher, since he's left, has proven I bring something. I bring a lot to the mm. table. Do you know what I mean? So he will bring hunger. He'll want to prove everyone wrong. But then on the flip side, could he overthink it? Could he, yeah. you know, it, that that's that, that's a thing. But I think it's a massive, there's not too often you could say this game is going to be won or lost on the line. I think the matchups and stuff like that is massive. Yeah. And and how the style of play they play. Like if Donegal look at how Monaghan went to try and beat Derry, like they have to be looking at going a slow, methodical attack yeah. is better yeah. than a breakout. You were saying like Donegal are going to try and break out. They have bundles of pace. But like, then you're going turnover after turnover after yeah, turnover. Yeah, yeah, Derry, Derry don't like playing that way. I'm like they want to, to go. I'm going to get you to call it now. Finian, go oh yeah, I'm, I'm going with Donegal. Yeah, well, look, the history kind of says over mm. the last twelve or thirteen years that you know Donegal will get the job. Will get the job done. They'll know how. Uh, I think they do need just on the point of the team a couple of tweaks. Like I, you know, if I were the management team up there will be looking at a Paul Brennan or someone mm. that can sit back in front, maybe starting him and maybe putting Mogan to centre forward on McKinless because Mogan can go forward, but he can he can also defend as yeah. well. So a bit of a hybrid there. Might, he might be better on McKinless than, than O'Donnell. But if they if they make the slight changes, they mirror Don Derry slightly, I think they have more more firepower up front. I think Donegal will win it. Yeah. I, I want Derry to win it just for a, a change up. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah, I, and, yeah. And, and to prove myself right. Yeah. But <laughs> but I, I just think like it's a massive like if Donegal lose this game, you have to be looking at the line and going, You have made bad decisions here. Mm. Like the manager has to be the fall guy here. Because like you've seen what Derry bring. They bring this energy and everything, and you've seen how Monaghan played against them. Like I I'd be if I was a Monaghan player or supporter, I'd be very frustrated. Mm with management going like we shouldn't have played the game this way so if if Donegal if the management get it right Donegal should win this game mm. but if they get it wrong and try and go toe to toe with Derry's energy Derry win the game so yeah. look at I'm I'm banking on a bit of a common sense in, in, in the Donegal dressing room to know right we we take this yeah. right right down to a dull drab affair not that I want a dull drab affair but yeah. to win a game yeah I it's, do that's it. what it's about it's about yeah. winning it so uh, if, if Donegal do it right they, they take the energy just sap the energy out of Derry yeah. and then just play at, a, 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 at their place mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to go Donegal unfortunately yeah I think while, just while we were chatting I was like going do you know what no there isn't more in Donegal I'm going to go with Derry and then by the time you finished I was like no I'm going to go with Donegal <laughs> uh, yeah I just think the know-how yeah. and I yeah. do think they have that experience that if they need to spoil the game they can do that. So, look, the three of us look like fools probably next week. Now, who's McGee Hopefully. tipping? Because I'm going He's the opposite. He's sitting of him. on the fence all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he must have bought the fence a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no room for me on it. Uh, it so, needs a dairy window. Provincial. Oh, need definitely. It, yeah. it would be great, be great, and it would be look. It'd be incredible, and the buzz that they'd have. Like they'd be dangerous in Croke Park. <coughs> oh, pace and but power. Yeah. Just sometimes <clears> the experience <throat> in Donegal are good at like that. They can spoil and. Yeah. change our style as well and look we won't spend long on the Munster I look it, I think it's great for Limerick the progress and whatever we talked about the price 45 euros absolute joke but I expect Kerry to win this by 15 points plus and that's just just there's a difference in class yeah look at we won't look, spend long dwelling on but would you look at Kerry like Kerry now are kind of like the Dublin of the great Dublin era the bench yeah, Man, yeah. I was looking at a bench against Cork. I was kind yeah. of this is it, like the bench if, is stronger than some of the starters. Oh, without a doubt. Like, and you look at that team. Like, if you went and said you're Dublin starting forward and the Dublin bench from back early yeah. in the in 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 2014, yeah. 15 or whatever, and then you put the Kerry one, like it's it, yeah. it's frightening. It's very it's similar. absolutely frightening. Like it's it's the, it's crazy. Yeah, the problem for the problem in the Kerry camp is the couple of lads who. Didn't play well the last day. Mm. Now this is a problem for Limerick and the rest. Like Tony Brosnan possibly played himself out of the picture. Yeah. Uh, now obviously there's a carry from an outsider looking in. You know he he missed a couple of chances. 
Ganey came on, like Did. they're fighting for the position and there's Killian's plan and, you know, there's that happening as well. So there's a lot of row. I'd say the AVBs are, are unreal down there. Um, but, but you're right, look, a team coming up from Division 3 playing this this scary team, Kerry should absolutely yeah. annihilate them, um, unfortunately. But that's just the nature yeah, so of the so three of us are in agreement there, Kerry comfortably. Yeah. But it did, look, it's good for Munster that Limerick are on the way back. But this Kerry team do look very strong at the moment. They look tuned in. I don't think they'll be caught. I actually think Leinster's going to be the same. I think Dublin, incredibly comfortably. Yeah. D- Dublin? And I know Kildare did all right this year. I think their celebrations in Newbridge is going to be a big... It's going to bite them. Yeah, like Dublin... Dublin are a different animal when they get to Crow Park because, like as I said earlier, man for man, they can pick lads up because the recovery pace, you know, like in a big mm. pitch, it's recovery pace and you can get your tackles in. Even if a forward sells you, he can get yeah. back to you. Like Mick Fitzsimons, when, if you sell him in Newbridge, you have a shot. You sell him... You have 10 yards to go yeah. to get your shot. Mick Fitzsimons makes that 10 yards. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? So that's where Dublin come to their milk. Yeah. You know, and, and like we, everyone wrote them off, they got relegated from Division 1. Like, Conor Callaghan back is worth three players. You have Conor Callaghan in there next of all. You cannot go man for man then. You have to have someone sitting in front of him. That frees up, would say, James McCarthy. Do you know, like yeah. James McCarthy running, that yeah. means Dean Rock's on the loop. Yeah, that he's brings a Rolls Dean Royce. Rock, yeah, but that brings Dean Rock back to where Dean is good. Like, do you know, like Dean's not a ball winner, like yeah. a Comer second or whatever. Ball. He's yeah. the second ball and he's a finisher. So, like, one player back for Dublin changes mm. the whole dynamic of yeah, their team. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, and like, it's mad to say, like, even Clifford doesn't have that influence in Kerry or, no. or McShane and Tyrone, like, the, or Murphy even in, in Donegal. Conor Callum, how he brings that Dublin team is. Outrageous. Yeah, it's it's totally a, different. Oh, it just else. turns the whole thing around. And it changes and the bench as well. Oh, massive. Because now you have Scully on the bench to come in, an all star. You've got Davy Byrne to come in. Their bench is a little bit stronger now than we. Well, everyone spoke about there was no f- names, but with James McCarthy back, Conor Callan back, those two now are on the bench and it makes, you know, the Oosters three or four posters yeah. up here. Yeah. I just see, look, Kildare have forwards to cause Dublin problems. I just think defensively, unless they go very defensive at the start, mm-hmm. I can see Dublin going for goals. Straight away, I think if a goal goes in and a second goal goes in, I just think the head's dropping and say, oh, this again. That mental baggage of carrying all the past defeats, I think Dublin by 10. (laughs) And I could, that'll probably come back to bite me. I just, Mm. I just think defensively Kildare don't, don't have it. Yeah, look, Dublin, like, the chances they had in, in Newbridge that day, like, I think yeah, Dean Rock just, had a chance to tip it in and I think the keeper got a hand in yeah, and just slapped it in. Just really off the boil. I just off the boil, yeah. They're like, back to doing basics really well. They look focused and I have heard of people who know lads playing that they were really cranky about Newbridge getting yeah. beaten. They o- the over celebrations they, they called a massive it. training camp and, yeah. and I'd yeah, say all I bets just, were off over there. Like, was, like that, even people like us now talking about them and like we talked about poking the bear it's going to hurt. These are proud players and they're going to go and they're going to look to make a make an impact. But we all in agreement, Dublin? Anyone going oh, for Kildare? Yeah. No, I think so. Dublin, yeah, Dublin. Dublin, Dublin, Dublin. Well, Kildare have looked great strides and they'll be dangerous in the back door. They yeah. will be. Oh, no, they, no one will want, they are, no one will I just think them. Dublin are in a, in a bit of a mood that they were not going to be caught. Yeah, yeah. like Highland, Flynn could play well, he could clean a Dublin yeah. back, but... A du- the rest of the Dublin backs could take Highland McCormick yeah. they could take them out like yeah. you know Johnny Cooper could just eliminate someone there and and, and, and be done with them <laughs> you know yeah. and Merchant the same and, and, and nothing said about it you know lads who were going really well in the It'd league be given. You nearly could be just taken out I- exactly yeah. but we're running out of time but we had a qualifier draw this morning uh, threw up a couple of tasty ones Armand Tyrone Mayo Monaghan Claire Mead and Cork and Leitrim or Cork and Loud sorry <laughs> She's out there, their Telting Cup and the and the Sam Maguire. But uh, the first two games, especially Armagh and Tyrone in the Gaelic Crowns. Fireworks. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, I was delighted. Now look, they're all a bit kind of. Uh, it's it's funny how they they were all pulled out together or whatever. But yeah. look, it's it's great. Tyrone, Armagh. You saying it was probably a fix? 
It feels like it. It feels like it. Um, but look, it's it's great. Tyrone are mad. That's the game you want. That's yeah. in the Gaelic grounds as well. All Ireland champions. That'll be a full house. Oh, yeah. They might even consider. I know someone was saying they might even consider bringing it to Crow Park or something like that. I don't know. I hope they don't. They, I, I, same yeah. as that. Same as that. I think you need to leave it in the grounds yeah. they're in. Fill those. Fill those. Have people wanting tickets and not getting them. Not Bring everyone deserves back. a ticket. No. no <laughs> Simple as that. Bring, not everyone can go. Bring that back. But and you, I think, you'd prefer to play in like now everyone's playing Crow Park, but Tyrone have played in Crow Park any amount of time. Yeah. But if you're playing in a stadium that is absolutely wall to wall sound, it yeah. is. There's nothing better. Yeah. Like 100%. you can all talk about like uh, like big massive crowds in Crow Park, but Tyrone Arma like it's not going to bring it full yeah, no. there's not a chance Crow unless Park you double header it with Mayo Crow Park isn't Mark. full anymore until no. it's all Ireland final day or unless you get a Karen Dublin at the semi final yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it but look like, at Nolan Park yes and Nolan Park's a class stadium for matches I don't know why they don't play enough more football yeah. matches there they have a lovely stand behind the goal it's really compact everyone is in on the pitch mm. like that match yesterday everyone was stuck in on top yeah. they were all mixed in it looked like really good crack or whatever and I think the Gaelic rounds will be the same because oh, the yeah. terrace is so close Behind the goal, like there could be a few, like it could be a few slaps, a few rows, a bit of crack, but like that's what Not you want. You know? No, course, but it's like frowned upon, but yeah, you love it. But you'd have a pint <laughs> after, like do you know what I mean, and the crack would be good. But look, I'm go- I, I, if we were looking for predictions, I think there's an absolute kick in Tyrone here. I think they're gonna, they're, I think they're three or four points gonna be better than Arma. Yeah, look at we'll me. make a quick note because we're running out of time. Tell us different. Yeah. Ne- neither team wanted this game. Like. As much as you think, yeah. like, oh, you want a big game no, to get yourself going, they would have loved a loud, they would have loved something, just get the ball rolling again. Mm. Uh, look, it's, it's hard to look back, turn around all Ireland champions, you have to you have to go with them. Like. No, but I'm going with Armagh. Donny's going through the business. <laughs> you know something we don't know. Uh, I tend to do. I, I definitely definitely think Tyrone have to have too much for Armagh. Have to. Mayo, Monaghan. Is that Mayo at home? Mayo at home. Mayo. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, look, you, you mentioned it earlier about the Mayo defence and we've mentioned it numerous times McManus doesn't get enough help off the Monaghan forward. Yeah. I just think the Mayo defence will be able to do a job in the Monaghan The forwards. learning Mayo yeah. will have got out of the Galway defeat yeah. Yeah. And, and the four players that were missing back make like Paddy Durkin and Rob yeah. Henley they make a huge difference so I think they'll learn they might change their style a little bit like everyone's mm. been kind of saying so I think there's a kick in Mayo, yes, there's good players in Mayo and I think Killian O'Connor more on the legs as well. Yeah, Mayo yeah. for me. I, I'd say Mayo, yeah, I think they have a little bit too much and, and the back door nearly suits them coming. Yeah, coming who would have thought? You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what after, after 10 years, I Claire and Mead. I'm going with Claire. I, I've, always, I've always said I don't think Claire ever get credit. Um, the consistently Division 2 the last number of years. Um <laughs> Colm Collins, the job he's done there is incredible. Yeah, I'd, I'd be and me aren't going well. People were surprised that they got such a beaten by uh, Dublin, and Just, I was there. Why were they surprised? surprised? Yeah. Definitely not. No, no. I heard a few Mead people on the radio and the build up to it, and I was like, going, "Where are they getting this optimism from?" Mead, Mead people, they, they, <laughs> this is but they had a bad Cameron. league as yeah, well. Like. Mead people see the, the the positive in the team the whole time. Like this, like they, they're thinking back in the late nineties, early two thousands when yeah. they were brilliant. Mead at the minute are. Like their Talchin Cup esque team, like they're mm. kind of that middle tier we were talking about they could, earlier. That's they could probably they do it winning a Talchin Cup. Yeah, that, that'll suit them a better. Bit of winning mentality back. Like Clare, Clare, the bad loss though, Clare against Limerick, you know, mm. like knocking. They would have been thinking, we get over Limerick and we kick I on. I think that's so. what caught him. Possibly, yeah. Mm. Yeah, look at you'd be thinking. Or maybe they are hitting the end of this curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, be going, I'd be going Clare. But it yeah. is very, very tight. Yeah, yeah I think it's tight. Both very, very level, level pegging game. Yeah, that. yeah. And Cork v Load. <sighs> I was chatting to a good few Cork people over the weekend, and they were hoping for either Clare or Load. And when I was like, "Wishing for Load is a dangerous one." Mm. Um, but they're at home. Oh, <laughs> Where's <I>, home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're throwing out a couple of dingers. <laughs> Turner's cross. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, I think like I think they'll have too much from. I think that bit of pride. I think they'll have taken an awful lot from the Kerry game, and I think they'll have to. I think they'll have too much. For I'm them. going for loud in this one. I think 
experience the Mickey Hart factor. Mm. I know we've spoken about it before. They've had a great year. Oh, and the worrying thing about Loud this year was losing to a team in Leinster after yeah. the year they've had, getting well bet by Kildare and then getting well bet in the qualifiers. So I think this is a lovely carrot for Loud. Well, they didn't get one of the big teams yeah. and they can finish their year in style. If they if they win this, this shows huge progress Massive, in Loud. Yeah. I think... You know, they've got good forwards, good enough forwards to trouble Cork oh, and do. a system, Mickey Hart will have the system in place. Like, I just think if they can win this, um, I think they can win it. I think they, they it's in Cork, but sure, look, Cork are where they are and uh, there's nothing between the teams at the minute. No. Yeah, I, th I just think, I think Cork should have too much for Loud. Like, I think Loud definitely have, have made great strides, but I think if Cork play even a fraction how they played against Kerry, You'd have to be thinking they've more than Loud. Yeah. Like Loud, don't get me wrong, have have, have kicked on and, and, and a brilliant year, but if you if you were a Cork man, you'd be really hoping to mm. to, to, to beat this team. Like Sam Mulroy, yes, quality footballer, but like there has to be a man in, in Cork that can nullify mm. his him and then next of all it's it's an open playing field because he's he's kicking the majority. You have of Grimes scores. and Byrne as well who yeah. are going well, but no, I I I I know what you're saying, yeah. yeah. On farm. On form, it should probably be loud, but I just and maybe we're getting blinded by the how Cork should be doing better. But look, I'm going to stick with Cork, and it's kind of how out of a Kerry thing as well. I'm hoping that they can kind of get the show back mm. on the road a small bit, and I think the GA needs them as well. But I think it'd be tight either way. I'd be tight. tight. It'll game, be a good yeah. game. It'll be a good all, game. All, all four tight games. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for with G lads. So thanks very much for joining me, and I'm delighted to be joined on the line by Longford's Mickey Quinn. Hi, Mickey. How are things? Good, yeah, all good. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, on on the wind down now, um, and wind wind up as well. Fingers <laughs> crossed. It's champo week, so um, yeah, it's a nice time of year. Um, when you when you're playing ball, and hopefully the weather picks up. Yeah, we could do with a bit of weather before we go into the game. I just want to congratulate you. Hundred appearances there recently for Longford. Uh, must have been a big moment for you, the club, I suppose, and your own family. Yeah, look, it was one of those things that it actually came about from just uh, trying to taught it up myself and, mm. and see in the past geez, how how many games have I played and how long have I been about because um, I remember looking back at um, Aidan O'Shea when I think he hit 130 or something or 150 and I was like same age and I was just looking to see what was the difference in maybe your, your top counties and counties further down the line uh, in regards to playing games with yeah. your county so um, it was just interesting to see the bit of a gap um, when you want to play games um, at that level, league and championship. So, um, but yeah, it's nice, uh, nice token, and one of those that that it's nice to have. And it's something that probably every county you'd you'd love to see them doing, having uh, having probably chalking down everyone's games and see see who's been around the most and played. Looking at Paul Barden, Dermot mm. Brady. These guys that have been around for a long time um, for, for Longford and you'd love to see what they have. Uh, I think Paul or met Dermot and he was saying that he could have been 17 years playing. So I think he's well past the 100, <laughs> maybe 200. But it's, it, is a, it is a nice gesture and like that, it is something that should be celebrated, you know, when fellas hit certain milestones um, that there is a bit of a token there. Because I remember when I saw it, I, I started thinking, how many games have I played for Kerry? Actually, I couldn't, I, I, I didn't look too much into it, but it is something that should be celebrated as well. And you mentioned it there about you're playing it to play games, league and championship, and obviously you have the Talton Cup now um, this weekend. And how how were your feelings about the Talton Cup as a whole when there was talks of this competition coming in? Yeah, look, what I've probably been for it from, from the beginning. Like, I, I probably... In one sense, looking at it with a head for myself that, you know, from my own game, I think definitely like I always wanted to, you want to play against the best, but you kind of, when you do get that opportunity to play against the best, you want to be in a position that you can compete. And I think there needs to be probably ways of developing and improving from year to year and, and probably long term. Um, and that's something that, look at playing your Dublins or your Currys or your top teams that on a, on any given day, this kind of thing that you might put it up to them, but or even put it up for 20 minutes or half hour, 40, whatever it is, but there's not as much development opportunities in in games like that. Um, and I think from a holistic point of view, you need to be looking three to five year plans, especially for, for the likes of Longford, that, okay, there you have a Talchin Cup and 
albeit this year um, it's knockout, but next year I think the plan is a group stage is to play more games and then teams can develop and have a have a target or stepping stones to actually move up up through the ranks, whether it be in the league and then push through the Talshan, have a couple of years, maybe one year good in Talshan to push on maybe and get games in the qualifiers at Sam Maguire level. Um, but I think there's more opportunity for more teams to develop. Like I think the Super 8s, when it came in, that just widened the gap, in my opinion, um, from your top eight to everyone else. Um, and even in that, there was probably a top three or four in that Super 8s. Um, so I think the Talchin Cup is an opportunity for, for teams to try and develop um, long term, not from just year to year. And I think that's what's happening probably with ourselves. We go from year to year, just kind of turn up and go again and go yeah. again. And there's there's no development and improvement when, when we're doing that. It has to be a bigger picture. Yeah, it's a, like, that was a brilliant answer because I was there for the last while kind of going, right, I want to get Mickey's uh, thoughts on the competition. And for the last few weeks, like on the show, we've been talking about the Talton Cup and I'm actually excited about it as an outsider looking to watch more competitive games and I was really keen to know your thoughts on initially and how to keep kicking it on and making this competition a real standout in the GA calendar. And even the way you talked about it there, you're right, like these games of playing, let's say if you're playing at Dublin, you might put up them for half an hour. They're not going to develop you. And it is, it's not a season on season. It has to be three and five year plans and not looking for the quick fix. And like you said it there at the start, it is about games. You want to play as many games as possible. And I know when I was playing, the worst part of Intercounty was the amount of training you did for so little games. And you'd be hoping if they can, the GA can get this right, that there's no there's no end to what it could be in terms of having an All Ireland final weekend where you've the Talton Cup on a Saturday and the All Ireland on a Sunday and making a big a GA festival of it, I suppose. Definitely. Um, like the thing is that there's there's county games the length and breadth of the country these past few weeks of um the challenge games or whatever you want to call them, yeah. um, behind closed doors and probably some of the greatest games that could be played. And, yeah. um, and but still it doesn't have the same same uh, effect that you know they are essentially challenge games or build up games for the for a championship, but you know well everyone's trying to play each other and there's a big scramble then a couple of weeks ago north and south and do you want to play someone in the challenge that you could meet um, in the Falchion Cup and then Connacht versus Ulster and you could meet them in a qualifier this kind of thing that everyone's doing it and, and looking for these games whereas you know if if there's a, a, a fixture or structure in place there to try and help that but again as much as um we kind of say the the structure of the Talshin cup or or whatever like the ownership a lot comes back to to the counties that th there's things in place there for that development that you know some counties have really good structures and things in place to to be competing at that level and it's it's only another wheel um or cog cog in the machine yeah. to try and get get Langford to improve or, or other Talshin Cup teams. Like I know we're physically probably we've a lot of young guys and, and the S and C side of things is something that's probably well behind other counties and probably the next six six months to two years is an area that we really need to improve on going forward. But like there's lots of little areas that that can be improved, but you'd hope with um with this this ch championship draw or second tier championship that there's opportunities for improvement and development in counties. Yeah, and you were at the launch there last week, and is there a you probably got a chance to talk to a few of the other lads? Is there a bit of a buzz amongst the other lads playing for the other counties that they're looking forward to it that they want to make a push for? Like obviously, like I see there, Kevin seem to be most people's favourites and. I suppose they got to Crow Park earlier this year in the Division 4 final. For me, looking from the outside, just a chance to get to Crow Park in a semi-final where you're playing somebody of equal standard to you in a final and getting the chance to climb the steps of the Hogan stand and collect silverware. Like, it must be a huge ambition for so many fellas because that's, that's what you're on about games. Right? But you dream of playing in games and big games and collecting silverware. So... I was just wondering now, would there be a big buzz now amongst some of the other lads you talked to that they're buying into it and they're thinking, geez, this is a real opportunity to progress? Yeah, like I think 
I think there is, but I think there's that hesitancy with things that is it going to be um, what happened in the past? Yeah. Um, there's an area, like, I think the big thing is it's a starting point and it mightn't be the, the best fixture or best setup at the moment, but once there's area for improvement and change, um, that'll come. And yeah. I think that can be adjusted no more than this year's knockout. Next year is going straight into uh, group stages and their games straight away for more games for everyone. Like, I think most of the lads are kind of open to that. Um, but I think it's it's how guys responded from losing the provincial championships to, to now. Um, I, I think any team that probably put in two, three weeks of good good training uh, the past two or three weeks will come out um, with a good result this weekend. And no one actually knows where anyone's at yeah. that's the thing um whether it be losing your provincial or getting a clip in, in your provincial game or doing well in a challenge match like i don't think anyone knows where where other teams are at until game day um, yeah. and you're looking at league form and league form is out the window at this stage because it's been so long ago and a lot has changed with maybe guys leaving panels or you know form dipping or injuries so um like i think that's the exciting part of things um and it's probably a shame too that look at the semi-final stages where games are going to be televised but even the wexford awfully one on ga go it's mm. it's great that there are games and there are platforms there that games can be on it mightn't be available for everyone or people mightn't it's not on RTE or, or your main channels, but if there's opportunities there for games to be watched, whether it be on YouTube Live or whatever, that people want to see games. And as you said, people want to see tight games like Wexford, awfully tight game at the weekend. We had finished. Um, you know, everyone wants to would love to see a five minute high league package on that game. Nike McNamee hitting one five. Five, yeah. Um, you know, like. They're they're the kind of games that you want to see. No one wants to see kind of dead rubbers where. Mm. 30, 20 minutes to go that, you know, there's seven, eight points in it and it's just kind of see out the game. So, look, there's there will be areas for improvement from from every aspect, but I think it's a start and a means to to go on for, for the likes of Longford and other counties. Yeah, I think the main thing as well is that they actually listen to the, to the counties that are playing and the players that are, are playing and want to be playing in it because there are ways to continuously grow the competition and make it more appealing for, let's say, some of the counties that aren't buying into it there's always ways to do it I think if they open their ears and they actually listen to fellas and do you know what they want they want games and do you know you want the rewards of getting to Crow Park and playing in the big games and then an all stars at the end of it or do you know something like that like for me like the opportunities are endless and it takes away from just being about your four and five teams that the end of the year all the time and but I suppose from your own point of view we were chatting about it off 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 camera like you're a, you have a young family now have you found the commitment levels um changing much over a couple of years and I suppose having the Talton Cup now and another chance of silver does it make it easier all the sacrificing we were talking about the, the ice bats and the chiropractors and the physios and the whoop the the recovery yeah look at everything kind of changes um and you get perspective on things a lot more I suppose for me I probably was lucky enough to Australia probably gave me that perspective on things that you know my reason for playing has always been family and and what it gives to the family and and the people that are close to you um and probably with a uh, little daughter there it, it heightens that even more um and to to play a game in Croke Park and and have family there and that is something that probably it, it's on the bucket list and um, before before I'm finished that to play a game in Croke Park uh, in a Longford jersey that that's something that I really want to do and um, but in regards to yeah time commitment and everything look we've probably uh, and, and you mentioned it as well off air that it, it's not the actual training it's probably the, the added extras um, and they're the kind of things that you kind of you're trying to to fit into your time um you know i think less is more and i think lads have, have started to realize that at inter-county that you're not slogging away um training four five six nights a week doing something every night i prefer to to load up on a day that you have a full day 
uh, recovery or a full day off. And um, because I think the mental load of it, um, it adds up if you're going every single day. So it's, you know, ice baths yesterday, chiropractor today, physio tomorrow, um, and then try and squeeze in a pool session or, or a kick uh, in your own time. And um, they're all the little things that you're trying to do to get the body right. Um, whereas I think the younger guys just want to kick ball and, yeah. and you want to kick ball too, but and the body might let you do it as much as you want to. Yeah, I actually always found that it was the the stuff you have to do away from training, the stuff that most people don't know about and they forget about or they don't want to know about. That's the stuff that I actually find. And even I'm only playing club stuff now and trying to be there at a certain times, so you can actually warm up and you're seeing the young lads. They don't even need to stretch anymore. They just run out there and throw their leg at it. And I'd be holding the hamstring just watching them. But it does, it takes time and it's more time away from the family or leaving work early or whatever like that. But uh, I was looking back, you were you were fortunate. You've, you've a couple of National League titles, um, 2011 and 12, two in a row. Um, was there ever a, a thought back then, like, you know, that you were going to keep kicking on and maybe Leinster Championships were... A goal because, like you mentioned, the Bardens there. Like the, I remember playing Longford in two thousand and nine, and very lucky to get get out of the game with a win. Definitely, like I I missed eleven. I came back from Australia in twelve, and uh, I got the Division Three Championship, mm. and like that, that was my first year back. And sure, Everton, you expect this is normal now, mm. winning a Division Three, um, and you're pushing on in Division Two. Then the following year, but. I think that's where where probably I find that your your second tier teams battle to back it up the following year and the year after and stay at that level that like realistically you're you're talking a, a three or four year cycle and keeping those players about for that length of time. I think we've struggled probably in the past where guys commit for a year and gone for a year and mm. back in or maybe two years and gone and and they're the kind of things that a squad, if you can't get everyone to buy in for for three plus years, then it's very hard to to make those progressions. And I suppose then if you're looking at the extended panel, that those other guys can benefit from that too. And I think that's where where it's been difficult to have those carrots um, for us to develop. Like we got up to Division 2 and it, um, look, we I think we lost a lot of games by two points, three points here and there, and then there was a few injuries. To key players at that time with Paul Barton and, and Decky Riley, um, and probably rushed back, and and then that kind of just um, heightened things. Then uh, that we were back down to Division Three, and then the following year back down to four. That it actually knocked us back a little bit because yeah. we were kind of chasing our tails a little bit then. Um, so it can be a bit of a, a roller coaster too that I think we went up from Division 3 that year um, and I think Roscommon and Cavan actually stayed there um, and then the following year we went back down they went up and they stayed in Division 1 and 2 um, for the following few years after that so it's amazing too how teams development over those few years can change um, you know, we were on a downward trajectory and they were on the up and stayed up so and yeah. um, they're kind of all the added little things you know players um snc set up just a lot of probably stuff in the background that kind of needed to be tidied up to get get guys committing for longer periods rather than just a couple of years here and there yeah and like i suppose you touched on at the start of the show like the talent cup it's not a, a one season it has to be a three-year plan a five-year plan and Look, hopefully now that there is good buy-in and like obviously you'd be a big name in the GA. When other fellas, I think for me, if when fellas see the attitude you're bringing to it and I see uh, Barry O'Hagan there recently from down talking about it, um, that's what you want to see. And that's the only way to progress. Like you talked about it as well earlier, but it's all about games. It's, it's not about the training. It's all about as many games you can play, league and championship. And obviously that carrot at the end of it you know getting to Crow Park hopefully a chance of silver which it is a realistic chance for an awful lot of teams in the Taltian Cup so I'm hoping that if the GA can really see what's in front of them and the the opportunity that's there to really grow this competition and hopefully actually listen to players like yourself and just on ways to grow it and make everybody really buy into it I, I just think we have an exciting um, opportunity to have absolutely great competitions all year round like i think so and i think i think come the end of this year whoever 
wins your Talisman Cup or whatever way it goes, mm. that I think you kind of have to tweak and change things as as it progresses to try and to try and cater for and improve. Like at the end of the day, in my eyes, I'm looking at how can maybe close the gaps um, and improve football in in counties like Longford. Um, and and a competition like that, if it needs to be changed or, or adjusted to try and allow for that um, and allow more improvement rather than kind of the gap widening. Um, mm. Do you know, I think a, a holiday for finalists as well as the the winners is something that on the further down the line is something yeah. that could, could be looked at and um, you know whether it be an all-stars or or not i i don't think players some players might buy into that a lot more i think the big thing is that there's recognition and that it is a good standard and it is competitive that it's not just a token competition and um, and i i think the GAA can be seen that it's not going to be that. And as, as we talked about that, it's not just a competition that's ran this year. And if it doesn't go well, then throw the toys yeah. out of the pram, let's scrap it and, and go a different direction that it didn't work. That, you know, I think things like this, in order to see improvement, you probably have to have a minimum of three years and then further down the line, it's five, seven, 10 years before you can actually see that long-term improvement. Like I'm looking at guys on a on a minor or an under seventeen county team at the moment that that are in St Mel's College. That are they interested or is there a real? Do you know? Do they want to play yeah. for for Longford? And having something like that, that okay, do you know, there's a character, there's an opportunity there to to play f- football at a high level and then maybe progress and move it on from the Talchin Cup that if there is a good squad or a good crop of young lads coming on that they're willing to whereas in the past I think it was very easy for guys to opt out um, and there's nothing wrong with, with lads opting out yeah. if, if it's not for them but I think if there's things in place to try and, and help and improve and and allow for that then I think there's more chance of guys wanting to wanting to be part of a county setup. Yeah and like that's what it's about I think young lads they want to be watching fellas in their own county fellas they see every day of the week walking down the street or teaching or whatever competing in big games going to Crow Park with the possibility of winning silverware but I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today Mickey and best of luck the weekend and I'm really hoping that uh, you can have a good run at it and um, look here's hoping it's a big competition now and uh, the GA buy into it because like we've both saying like the the possibilities are endless with this and hopefully now um Hopefully now you've been kicking on and we might see you in Crow Park later on in the year. Fingers crossed. Here's open. Thanks, yeah. Mill, for having me. Cheers, Mickey. Talk to you later, man. Well, that's all we have time for in today's show. A big thanks to Longford's Mickey Quinn for joining us today to talk about the Talitian Cup. And a big thanks to former Cavan footballer Keen Mackey and former Galway footballer Finian Hanley for joining me in studio. Uh, look forward to seeing you all next week where we'll have loads more action to talk about. <laughs> <laughs>